Hey guys, Chris Neville here. People are starting to put tags in their pocket. And we're kind of moving into the planning stages for your upcoming hunts. And in this video, I'm gonna be going over my top five tips for planning for an upcoming elk hunt this fall. The first thing you need to do when planning for an elk hunt is deciding on the hunting style that you'll be doing. So when I mean hunting style, are you gonna be truck hunting, base camp hunting? You're gonna be backpack hunting? You're gonna be doing a combination of both? Understanding the tag you have, the area you're gonna be in, and where those elk are gonna be, and the hunting style that best suits you is super important to do at the very beginning of the planning stages because it's gonna dictate the areas that you look for in your e-scouting research, plus it's gonna dictate the gear that you bring on this type of hunt. You know, for me personally, I prefer backpack hunting for elk. That's just kind of the style that I'm used to and most comfortable with, but everyone's different. There's no right or wrong answer to what style of hunting you're gonna be doing. And it's kind of gonna vary depending on the tag, the area, and where you're gonna be looking based on your hunting style. If you're gonna be base camp hunting, right, you're gonna be worried about access, four wheeling trails, roads to get to these different areas, backpack hunting, you're gonna be looking for areas that are remote, away from people where you can find unpressured elk. So deciding what kind of hunt and the style that you'll be doing is super important and the first thing that I do when I'm planning for an elk hunt. Tip number two is your e-scouting research. Now it's time to find areas that you think elk are gonna be. For me, I like to keep this pretty basic. I know elk need three things, food, water, and bedding. My goal when I'm doing my e-scouting research is I'm trying to find the most optimal habitat that's gonna have elk. And like I said, I usually focus on those main three things, food, water, and bedding. And one tool that I've found that has been super beneficial in really narrowing down and honing down your search and finding these key interest areas is the terrain analysis tool on Go Hunt. So what terrain analysis tool is gonna do is it's gonna highlight in green these optimal habitat areas that are most likely gonna be holding elk. So when I'm looking in a new area, the first thing I like to focus on is bedding. Dark timber, north facing, northwest, northeast facing slopes that are zero to 25 degrees in slope. That's kind of the steepness of the slope. If you get too steep, the chances of elk bedding there aren't as good as if it's from that zero to 25 degree steepness angle. And what's great about the terrain analysis tool, and it's gonna highlight in green those exact spots that fit that criteria. And it's gonna be those areas that are gonna be most optimal for elk bedding. And you can start to mark those and start to look at those spots and really identify those bedding areas. Once I've identified these bedding areas, I then like to look for feed in relation to these bedding areas. When you're e-scouting, Looking on a map, feed is usually these open areas, this edge habitat, this mosaic, pastures, meadows that elk are gonna be out feeding. And not all feed is quality feed. And this is a tip that I learned from Randy Newberg and a great way to really hone in on the best feed possible, the most diverse feed that elk are most likely gonna be on during the fall is using the terrain analysis tool, northwest, northeast, and east facing slopes. Those areas are gonna hold the most moisture content, which is gonna be the best feed for elk during the fall. We've all seen that really dried up areas come August, come September. So focusing and finding these areas of feed on northwest, northeast, and east facing slopes are gonna be more ideal and more optimal for elk to be feeding there. The last thing that I like to look for is water. So elk, especially September during the rut, are gonna be drinking a lot of water and finding these areas that have good water sources are gonna be important in finding that optimal habitat. I like to jump on to Go Hunt Maps and look at their topo maps. What's good about topo is it's easy to identify water sources. You can see the streams, you can see the possible wallows, you can see ponds, you can see where all the springs and where water most likely will be at. And then from there, I like to switch back to satellite. I'm gonna zoom in as close as possible. I'm gonna to try to verify these water sources. Are these running water sources? Are they dried out? Are these reliable water sources that I think water is gonna be come fall? Now that I've identified quality feed, quality bedding, and quality water, I've really narrowed down and honed my search into these different areas throughout the area that I'm focusing on of where elk are most likely gonna be during the fall, and that's kind of my e-scouting process that I like to do. You know, I look for feed, bedding, and water, and then if I can find those three things 
all in the same area, drainage, basin, the chances of elk probably being there are higher than these other areas. So that kind of hones in my search and make sure that I'm heading in the right direction come hunting season. Tip number three is gear preparation. So doing a lot of your homework, getting all your gear ready before the hunt. So you're most prepared when you get out there and you don't have to worry about gear failure is very important. One thing that I like to do is gear list. Writing down a list of all the gear that I currently have, kind of taking inventory. I can mark things that are maybe broken, areas that I know that I need new gear to get before this upcoming hunt. But understanding everything that you have and everything that you need as far as gear for the hunt is gonna help you be more prepared and you're not gonna be wasting any time in your hunt worrying about your gear. If you've never done an elk hunt and you're unsure on what gear you need to bring, Go on has a ton of great resources, articles, and gear lists, YouTube videos, specifically going over different gear lists for these different types of hunts. They're gonna have everything that you need to bring. My last tip for gear preparation is to test all the gear that you have before you go on the hunt. Make sure it's in good working condition, you're comfortable with it, you know how things function, you know how to set up your tent. All that stuff is gonna be important so you're not wasting time on the hunt and you're actually hunting, not worrying about how to use your gear. Tip number four, and this is probably hands down the most beneficial to being successful on hunts is planning a scouting trip. If you can plan a scouting trip, if you can do any type of scouting beforehand, especially if it's a new area, I highly recommend getting boots on the ground, getting a lay of the land and seeing what you're getting into before you go hunting. The more you can scout, the better the hunt's gonna be. You're not gonna be wasting time on your hunt doing things that you could have done scouting. For me, when it comes to scouting trips, the first thing I like to do is check access points. So I'll drive around the unit, I'll drive down different roads, I'll go up different trails. I'm gonna figure out what roads are closed, what areas I can't get my truck down. Just finding these different access points around the unit that I can get to and areas that I can't get to. So when it comes to the hunt, I know exactly the spots that I can get into and start hunting. Second is from my e-scouting research, I'll have areas of interest that I have marked, like I've said, from good feeding, good bedding, good water, that I think elk are gonna be in during the fall. And what I like to do on my scouting trips is pick a couple of those areas and go in there and verify what I found from my e-scouting research matches what's on the ground. So going in to these areas that you're interested in and kind of verifying, does it look like there's gonna be elk in there? Is there a good reliable water source that you can use and the elk can drink from? Is the bedding good? Is the feed good? Is it green? Is it dry? Then you can start to mark areas that you know for sure that you're gonna go into and areas that you can start to check off that aren't as good as you thought from your e-scouting research. So that's kind of what I like to do on my scouting process. Find access, check all the different areas that I can get into to start off with and then I'm gonna start going in and verifying these different spots that I've marked for my e-scouting research and deciding which areas are gonna be better than other areas from this boots on the ground scouting that I've done. Tip number five is logistics. So this is kind of the nitty gritty details, the food supplies, the travel arrangements, when you're gonna go hunting, for how long, meat care, all that stuff is gonna be logistics and something that you need to do and dial in and have thought out before you go on the hunt so it runs more smoothly, more successful, and you don't run into any problems when you're actually out there hunting. And it's always good, write things down, write down a list of things you need to do, everything you need to do before the hunt. My biggest advice when it comes to preparation and logistics before the hunt is don't wait till the last second. I've done that before, it makes things stressful, it's not that fun. Try to get everything done and your logistics dialed in way beforehand so you don't have to stress and worry about it a couple days before the hunt. That's probably my biggest advice when it comes for planning your logistics. Those are my five top tips when it comes to planning for an elk hunt. This is the same process and framework that I use on all my elk hunts, whether that's out of state or in state. I hope this has helped you out and hopefully you can be more dialed and prepared for your upcoming elk hunts this fall.